Um, yes, Fa Fabian King is here. He, he was waiting in the Phoenix Cafe, and so we're, we're, all, we're all set to talk uh, over the next hour or so about really following up from the, the last time you were here when we looked at 3D printing. The, the previous show up, upstairs was uh, all about uh, different, different things that can be done with ad additive layers. And, um, well, since then, the, the, I think the first thing to talk about is the, is the current show, which is by Maya Conran, The Crowd Laughs With You Always, which um, is, is really a continuation of that, of that first show. And you, you, you have had, had a look, Fabian. Yes, I, I have had a look. Uh, and hello, good morning, all. Um, I found it um, quite interesting. I, I came around it about, um, uh, went around the, sh the exhibition about three days ago. And then I spent another ten minutes or a quarter of an hour around it this morning. And um, on the one hand, you got the extension of the, the previous exhibit of, of um, what are rows of plastic seats um, produced by the process of digital manufacturing. It was 3D printing, in fact. And um, the quantity of them, the row upon row upon row of these identical white seats, all lit up from above um, in, in all its... Uh, what can you call it? It, it, it looks um, quite um, hygienic, but also the seats are empty. And then projected onto the screen in front of those seats on the far wall, there's a, a, an extended film clip from uh, Vidor's film called uh, The Crowd, um, which the, the film is, I think the, the premise of the film is, is all to do with the statement of you can't get on in life unless you stand out from the crowd. And the film builds on from there. Um, and a lot of the motifs of the film are to do with large quantities of faceless people, dare I say. I mean, all the seats are empty. Right. And there's one shot of an entire auditorium of en empty seats, and the, the seats start clacking up and down and so on. And it, it shows the sheer numbers of, of people that could be there, but they're not and how the world caters for lots of people and no one is really standing out, there's no one there. It's slightly spooky, the whole thing, really. So there's a mixture, then, of film and uh, sculpture. Yes, indeed, indeed. I, I, I think uh, Maya Conran is, is talking about uh, leaving analogue film behind and um, my interpretation of it is, because I come from the world of scanning and printing, is that... on. You, you now have, you are now able to capture um, physical things uh, and film animation in, in a digital format which can then be redirected to many different outcomes, whether it's a, a 3D printed plastic outcome or a metal outcome or whether it is a digital film that you can receive via broadcast on, onto your, your own handheld device, like a smartphone or something. Everything is digital. So there's there's one room. I don't know if you've got got there at the right time. There's a there's a there's a sort of container space with uh, a film projector inside it that you have to be there at the at the correct times of day. I think there's several days on times on a Saturday. Yeah. Uh, and I haven't I haven't been been there at the right time. Yes. I, I likewise I was there um, wondering whether I was in time for the person to project a film, but no, I missed it. Um, but um, when the person isn't projecting uh, a film in that in that dark space, um, nevertheless, there are the the um, they call them the artifacts of the um, I think it's a Cine Eight um, Super Eight Proje film projector. projector. There's also a camera, and uh, occasionally there's a voiceover um, commentary against a film to encourage you to to think of what's being uh, think of the film that might be showing at the time. And there's also a couple of um, bits of prose about the film itself, the, the, the makeup of, of the celluloid, uh, the fact that you need to have a gate which causes uh, noises of clatter and about the flickering light of a, the projected film going through probably a smoke-filled room. So you've got these beams of light dancing around and, hey, hey presto, they, they project onto a screen and you have the moving image. So it explores um, the old-style film projector, I guess, just to help you experience it. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to try and try and ca catch a screening of that, and we may we may come back to this like in a in a fu future one because the show's there till I think the sixteenth of March. That's right, and uh, this 
is it this Saturday, 2nd of March? There's going to be a talk at about I think two... it's a couple of weeks' time. A couple of weeks' time. OK. Yes, that's right. At 2.30 um, in a couple of weeks' time, Saturday, 2nd of March, uh, Maya Conran is going to be giving a talk about it and a screening of, of her work, which uh, should be very interesting. Well, it's a screening of... Um, I think it's a sc- Well, I think there'll be a, a information about her work, but also the, the, the crowd, the 1928 silent movie, yeah. is going to be going to be screened in complete... complete. Yes, it's, it's not a very long film, so it's not an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is a shorter film than that, so so there's no excuse for not going along. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think you brought some some music with you. To, just to explain, what, what what you want to play and and uh, request is is arbitrary. It's up to you. you can, there's no restrictions, but we're we're trying to ex- explore uh, which way from the eighties we're going to go. So I don't know how that strikes you as. Uh, okay. Um, well, I, I <laughs> you did give me a hint about this before, and I thought, well, if JD's going to concentrate on the eighties, I'll try and make a radical departure. <laughs> And what I did to start with was to go back to, um, I, I just got out of the 70s actually, it was Janis Joplin to start with, and uh, sadly she died in the 1970s, but um, her raw, raucous blues, I mean, it's unmistakable. And um, funnily enough, over just the weekend just gone, um, there's a, a great uh, friend of uh, ours who's, um, he's American, and he's also a, a um, school psychologist, and just in passing, he said Janis Joplin, when she lived um, way down, I think it was Port Arthur, down on the Gulf of Mexico, in Texas, um, she was, uh, at her high school, she was a wallflower. <laughs> so she did not stand out from the crowd. She was very um, placid and didn't have any outstanding characteristics. And then you just wait till you hear this. This, this song is called uh, One Night Stand. And um, it's all about her being on the road and feeling low and making up by getting together with a man. You gave me a bit of a problem here. Uh Because you didn't tell me which CD to put in. Oh, it was the one on the top, sorry. Yeah, no, it's the one on the top. Side two. two. uh, Yes, it's it's, uh, CD two. So hang on a minute. We're just getting there. Yeah, I'm just getting there. I'll get there. Talk amongst yourselves. We're talking. Well, the, the, af- after this record, we'll be having a look at design science, which is our theme, our main theme of the programme. You may not think we're that organised, <laughs> but we've got our, got our, uh, our aim uh, clearly in mind. <laughs> OK, I'm ready. Here we go. Here we go. Wow. 